welcome back. Uh, another great episode coming this week for you. We're about to pick up our third charter of the season. So uh, season's in full swing. Today is July 11th uh, and uh, we're re getting ready to get going. I'm currently in the tender, the X-Craft, on the way into villefranche summer to uh, jump in the Vito vans, run over to the FBO, meet the private jet that's flying in with this week's guests and then bring them back to the boat and welcome them on board. So uh, stick around for this great episode. What you're seeing here is the boys inflating our brand new Fun Air pool. If you haven't seen it already, I will leave a link below and you can go and watch the entire video. We received a couple questions about why we sit on this particular mooring ball in Villefranche and the main reason is just so that we can get prime position for our guests in the anchorage. You actually have to use a pilot to hook up to this mooring ball, which you'll see now. Okay, so it's a little after 1am. Uh, we're just waiting on the pilot boat. He's just coming down now. Uh, we're still in Villefranche saint -Mur. And uh, as soon as the pilot comes on board, we'll be able to drop our lines. We're going to slowly make our way outside of the bay here. And then it's a seven hour passage this evening through to uh, Portofino. So um, should get us in around about 8 a.m., 8.30 tomorrow morning. Uh, second officer Bjorn did the passage plan earlier. We've gone through the pre-departure checks. So done all the propulsion, done uh, steering, making sure that everything, the vessel is uh, working the way it should. Then once we pull out through here, the pilot is going to jump off back onto the pilot boat. He's going to go back to Nice. We're going to turn left and we're going to cruise uh, 96 miles through to Portofino. I'm going to hand the boat over to Bjorn. He's going to drive the boat through to, for about four or five hours. Uh, and then as the sun starts to come up at five and five in the morning or so, uh, Chief Officer Davey's going to take over the watch and, and bring it through to arrival uh, when I'll come up and to bring it into Portofino. So uh, we do a lot of night passages on board the boat. Uh, guests obviously like to be in the destinations and do activities at the destinations. So when we have these longer passages, 100 odd miles, we do them at night so that, uh, so that they're not wasting time during the day standing around doing nothing. So uh, should be a nice easy one. Weather looks good. Be a, be a smooth sailing through the evening. So how an operation like this works is we will set a particular time to drop our lines. The pilots will meet us in the anchorage, one will come on board and one will jump onto the mooring ball. He will then drop our lines, we will slowly back up and make our way safely out of the anchorage where he will disembark and make his way back to his home port and then we will be on our way to our destination. Okay, so we just dropped off the pilot about a minute ago. He jumped off the back of the boat. We're now just starting to come up to speed. Uh, we're currently doing a little over 10 knots. We're gonna come up to about you know, 12 and a half, 13 knots for this evening. As you can see, maybe in the background here, we've got the cap for rat. Uh, we're just clearing that. I'm gonna start doing a big slow left banking turn and then pointer east towards Portofino. As soon as we've done that, I'm gonna hand it off to second officer Bjorn for the evening. And then he's gonna he's gonna ride on through. Uh, beautiful flat calm conditions out here, so it should be a nice passage uh, through the night and uh, into tomorrow morning. So it should be a good one. Cool. Okay, cool. So we've arrived here in Portofino. Uh, we got in here like 8:30 this morning. It's a very chilled passage last night. A couple of fishing boats around, but honestly, not much happening. And uh, yeah, arrived here in Portofino, and it was a bit swally. It's not the best here but um, still nice to be here, it's beautiful. Guests went ashore and had some lunch. Sadly, we don't have a spot on the rocks against the stern mooring balls. So we're just sitting out here at anchor, but um, we're about to lift anchor and head down to Fort de Mami. So we'll show you how the anchoring process works, how we lift anchor. Let's go inside with Tristan. Yeah, how's it guys? So, um... We're going to lift up anchor now. We've got four shots in the water at the moment. Um, we're leaving Portofino now. We're going to head off soon. So, we'll get... yeah, copy that, Paul. I'm up here. Okay, come on. Copy that. So, it's going to start lifting the anchor now. So, all I've got to do is make sure my clutch is engaged, which it is. Make sure my remote is on. And then I'm going to be just pressing hoisting over here. Then, going to be releasing the brake. And then all I gotta do is jump over this little tender, go to my viewing hatch, and give Paul 
chain length and which way it's lying. So here we go. That's anchor home. Cool bananas. I've just finished picking up four shots of the anchor. So you can see we've got our base plate of our anchor here. We've put on our base plate. That basically just stops salt water from getting into our tender garage. Because as you can see, we've got quite a few tenders in here and we don't really want to throw salt water all over them. Especially if we spend days and hours trying to make sure they stay clean and stay detailed for our guests. So now all I've got to do is I've got to drop my devil's claw. It's basically your third line of defense to make sure that your anchor doesn't fall back down in case of one of the, your other systems failing. So your main system that you're going to rely on is your brake, which sits over here. All i got to do is spin my little wheel, tighten her up, make sure she's nice and tight. Also look at my clutch, make sure my clutch is engaged. And then, yeah, pretty much good to go. Thanks for all the help. Good morning. It's uh, day three. We arrived in Porto Viticio last night at uh, around about 1 a.m. It's currently 9 a.m. and we're just uh, dropping the toys in for today's activities. We're gonna hang here for a little bit, do a bunch of water sports and uh, just play around. It's the first time this trip that we've had flat calm water to do all, to get, really get in and play around. Then uh, later this afternoon, around five o'clock, we're gonna move around the corner back to uh, Porto Ferrario, where we were about two weeks ago. Spend the night there before continuing down the coast to uh, next stop is uh, Port Hercule, uh, day after tomorrow. So, um, been really good. Welcome back to another episode of Docking with Paige. I'm a bit, I've been roaming fender, so we are a bit short here, but um, thanks mom for the high demand in episode two. Um, we are going stern in, in Port Ferrario. Yes. In Elba. Yes. Um, as you can see by the amount of work the boys are doing, we are on a charter, um, so they're on their best game. We are those shackles. And that crowd that's out there, they do a little zoom, <laughs> rented them to watch, all come and watch Franco throw a line. <laughs> to our port side, see a rare at yacht chef in his natural habitat, hopefully he doesn't pull a blare and lose the drone. <laughs> so our number one oh, yeah. line thrower, Franco. Oh, uh, how's it guys? Welcome back to the Loon channel, eh? How are you feeling right now? I can feel no, hot that's, racing. It's just called the pulse because I'm a human and I'm alive. It's just very hot, sweating, but chilling. It's a bit of a crowd, hey? How do you feel? Yeah, I'm excited, hey? <laughs> I'm excited to redeem myself once more. He's excited for another 2 million views on Instagram yeah, from yeah, the Yacht yeah. It's almost at 2 million, but the next one we go for 2.5, hey? Yeah. Thank you for coming. Now, please leave yeah. me go. With Cheers. It. Good Thank luck, you. hey? Cheers. That's my laundry yeah. chase boat, actually. Serious face glasses are on. He actually got this one. He did make it. Yeah, he did make it. Very proud. Kind of disappointed we didn't get some. It's some a bit footage. of an anti, anti yeah. climax, you know? Oh. Ooh, clean. <laughs> okay, so thanks for joining us for episode two. Um, Blaze's gonna do a montage now, so let's watch. <laughs> Mate, 
You late for dinner? Come, hurry up, bro. Come, we're cooking pizzas. Come. Always late. You late, dog? You late? Your chef's gonna shout at you. Your chef said seven twenty. Seven eighteen. Now early. Two minutes. Your chef said call the past. I've been in the way. Your your chef said call the past to me, mate. Look at the time. Eighteen minutes past. Late. If you don't move, we're gonna be really late. Is Sean being late becoming a thing? It's always been a thing. You. I've never been caught. So I'm trying to turn this into below deck, bro. <laughs> trying to create some drama here. So tonight we're going to make a table, table side Caesar salad. We've got some pizzas and then we've got some Nutella strawberry crepes uh, for hey, dessert. Yo! Bro, look! What's that? Some fresh fish dazzle, bro. <laughs> Where'd you get it? Bro, I went to every supermarket here. Nobody had. There was a little, little like pottery going. And I was like, bro, I need some. And I got some. Bro. Sorted. You stole it out of a gun. I did. But, uh, no. Anything to make the guests happy, you know what That's I mean? That's why I employ South Africans. <laughs> <laughs> Save us a dollar or two. <laughs> I know, I wish you had this one for yeah. me. I did not <laughs> steal anything. Do you have the receipt? Listen, yeah. Yo, it's coming out your wages, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I paid five euros for that plant. Just to be clear, I didn't steal anything. I saw it, it's I a... asked for it, I took it, and then I paid for it. No way. Story done. Just the most wait. expensive basil in the world. <laughs> Happens that I'm not here. 100. percent That's what happens. Sean, really? <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> Here we are, we're in Portoferrario, we're on the dock and we're just getting ready to leave. Engines are fired up, pilots on board, we're just waiting for permission to depart from the harbour. After that we're going to cruise over to Porto Santo Stefano for the day before cruising down to Capri later this evening. Last night the guests had a pizza party on the aft deck, Chef Dean brought out the pizza oven, did a really cool a, a traditional Italian pizza night, guests absolutely loved it. After that they managed to walk down and go and have a walk around town, really cool here in Porto Ferrario. every evening at 7.30 they shut the main street down and the bars sort of spill out onto the streets and you can sort of walk around the bars, have a really cool time, great vibe here, this is one of the reasons that we love this place. Uh, yeah, so that's really last night and today. Uh, really cool things to come. Looking forward to getting to Capri in two days. It's been amazing. Cool, so we've just pulled off the dock. Uh, all lines are gone. We're slowly creeping forwards. Ruse up forwards in the uh, tender garage, picking up the anchor. Nice and slow as we just oh, creep forwards. Clear of the first sailboat, uh, so you can keep coming to port. Yeah, copy that. Uh, another couple of minutes, uh, Mr. Pilot behind me is going to guide us out and then he's going to jump off at the end. So. Uh, Super nice and easy coming out this morning. Beautiful conditions, no wind, not really any current. So uh, just a nice easy one this morning. So basically it's nice dinner. We've got a bit Asian. We've got pork shu mai, which are dumplings. Veggie gyozas, drunken noodles, sweet and sour vegetables. Um, this is going to be teriyaki salmon, honey chicken that Chef is used at the moment. Mm -hmm. I'm lucky enough to have Chef on me with the crew food tonight because he has been off for lunch. So he got involved. It's been absolutely brilliant getting a one on one with the yard chef. <laughs> lucky boy, huh? <laughs> yeah, some people pay for this, so it is what it is. Let's see what it does. Um, and then I think we've got some. Peking duck pancakes that are going to be done now as well. Chef's on those as well. So I'm literally running and just following his lead at the moment. This looks epic. Thank you, dude. Crew are going to be so stoked. You can see them at the window if you really want to look. You can see all of them standing. Look there. at them waiting for that dinner. Yeah. Animals. Like, oh, <laughs> all of them. <laughs> there they are. Oh. <laughs> Boys are looking hungry. <laughs> I really wanted Dean to talk you through this dinner. It looked so, so good. But unfortunately, while he's working, he does not like to talk to the camera, which is completely understandable, especially when you're cooking for guests of this caliber. So just enjoy what you can see.
Today is day six of our charter. I'm busy setting up the breakfast table in Capri. I've gone for a bohemian setup. As you can see, we've made use of dried flowers and beautiful little golden butterflies that we have on board. And then for the napkins, we have done a soft knot. Max and I saw this at Gypsy in St. Bart's and we just loved that look. Once the guests are awake, we will bring out the breakfast platters, which is usually croissants, and cheese and ham platters, as well as fruit. And then we will offer them the breakfast special of the day, which is a cheese and spinach omelette. Okay, good morning, day six. We are just slowly pulling out of the Capri anchorage on the south side here, coming past the hole on the rock, and then we're gonna come up to speed. We've got about a two hour passage over to Positano. Guests have lunch at the famous Shea Black later this afternoon, and then we're just gonna sort of hang out, do some water sports, take in the beauty of Positano. So a really cool day ahead of us, super excited for it. So as we were leaving Capri, Captain Paul asked if I would like him to back the boat up to the rocks so we could take a couple photos and get some content and obviously I said yes. So this is us backing up for a little photo shoot. Um, there's a reel up on our Instagram page of this whole thing if you want to see it already. But this is just one of the things that Loon does which makes Loon Loon. So not many boats in the industry that do stuff like this but it's really really cool to see. guys, so here we are in beautiful Positano. We've just run ashore quickly. Sorry. <laughs> We've just run ashore quickly to uh, come grab some eggs because the chefs have run out of some eggs. And we're going to go check out one of the restaurants that the guests are going to for lunch called Chez Black. They absolutely love it. Um, and then the last time we were here, we went to the most incredible little wine cellar up the road. So just running ashore because the guests want to go to it again. So we're going to go try to see if we can find it and see if it's open. Cool. Okay. So hey guys, here we are in the cellar. Uh, we came here last year and our guests absolutely loved it. They bought a couple cases of wine. Wow. So we just came to check it out. Uh, we're going to bring them back here. It's actually a really, really cool feature. It's underneath one of the old churches. Um, yeah. What's up? Working hard or hardly working? Is that the no. sous chef I see? This is a sous chef. I'm cooking for the crew today, which is pretty cool. Gave Sean the, uh, no, that's not the menu. That's the menu. No. Oh, Sean Connolly, hey? Got this for lunch, and then this for dinner. Beautiful. So yeah, sometimes I like to give the sous chefs uh, a bit of a go at you know, being the head chef. If my sous chef sticks around too long, I'm not happy, and I want him to move on, or her to move on, to be uh, the next head chef. So it's, it's pretty cool to let them do this and um, yeah, let them create whatever they want to create and show their skill on a plate. It should be cool. Yeah. Thanks, dude. What is going on, Mr. Head Chef? What's up? I am currently head chef for the day. I mean, my sous chef over there, Dean. <laughs> he hasn't been doing much. <laughs> um, we're just finishing off guest lunch. Got some mahi with pineapple salsa, a little bit of pickled red onions, and over there, chef's got a rissa chicken with cauliflower and well, it's finished. Come at a hectic time, bro. Woohoo! Good to see you. I like to see you boys working. 
Bro, he's so out of line. He's literally just been sat in the crew mess the whole morning, drinking coffees and waiting for people to praise his food. Waiting for crew to walk past, to see what they're doing. That's what you do every other day, so... Uh, please don't speak to me like that, Chef. Sorry, Chef. <laughs> I've been on a two-hour lunch break. Chef, have you done the desserts for tonight yet? No, Chef. Why not, Chef? You, you know we do this every morning. Desserts come first, then we've got to crack on to everything else. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> let, let I don't go. film this. <laughs> <laughs> Even got the big fella on the dish now. Look at that. <laughs> hey, I'm happy. This is great. <laughs> no responsibilities, nothing. This is great. Life of a cruise chef, huh? Bliss. <laughs> he, was, he wasn't saying that this morning when he was running all day. <laughs> you, last one, chef. You chef, chef, right? You. <laughs> king of the castle, king of the castle. <laughs> <laughs> We've just been sitting here, we're just having some sunset drinks with the guests and we saw all these boats come out, not really sure what was going on. Blair put the drone up, we had a look and it's, a, it's a, I guess a Positano version of like a paddle out. It looks like someone may have died and all his friends have all got in their boats and they've gone out and they've had a, a last cocktail, scattered some ashes. They all just did a big honk of their horns. So we figured, you know, since we're here, we're in their waters, we'll show our respect as well and also honk our horn with them. So uh, here we go. Awesome. Such a cool tribute. Good morning, it is day eight and we have just arrived here in Nerano. In front of me now, the boys are just dropping in the jet skis and they're starting to get the pool and everything ready for today's activities. A little later on this afternoon, uh, the guests are gonna have lunch ashore at Coco del Songo, just over here on my port side. Maxine is about to run in, check that the reservation's all good, that we have the best table in the restaurant, make sure that everything is perfect for our guests. After lunch, the guests are gonna come back. We're gonna hang out for a little bit, maybe just do that one last jet ski and uh, just take in the water sports. There's a really cool cave here that we might go and explore. And then after that, anchor up, sail around the corner, all the way back up to Naples. It's about two hours. And then we're gonna dock there. And uh, we're gonna have a big crew and guest barbecue for a final farewell to our guests as they leave super early tomorrow morning. So it's a beautiful day. It is hot though. Wow, Mediterranean summer is here. And uh, let's get through this. Let's stay cool and uh, it's gonna be a great day. And we are heading in to see the restaurant where we've got a reservation for lunch today. It's a restaurant called Conca del Songo. It's a really cool location amongst the rocks on the water. We're just heading in to see if the table is a good one, make sure that it's got a beautiful view and it's gonna be good for the guests. So we just got back from the restaurant, checked on the table, everything was good and on our way back to the boat we found this really awesome cave so we thought we'd come check it out and see if it's something the guests would want to do later. We are on the last day of the trip. We're in Italy and they've just gotten off. It's sweltering hot, summer is in full set, and we're about to jump off the bow to cool off. Wee! Wee. <laughs>
Okay, so we're just uh, starting to pull into the marina now. I'm just slowing her down uh, carefully here. Uh, we've just had about an hour and a half cruise or so from around the corner at our Conco del Songo, Positano area. Uh, we're just about to pull in, you know, fenders over the side, squeeze in between two boats, as so we've been told, and then uh, tie her up for the night. We've got a big barbecue this evening with the guests and all the crew. Always something that the crew love, the guests love. We get to intermingle, have good conversations, and, uh, and go from there. Uh, it's been a great trip. Guests have been amazing. It's been a really cool itinerary. A lot of first times for a lot of the crew on board that have been able to get out and explore a lot of these places themselves as well. But definitely looking forward to some rest over the next couple of days before we pick the next one up on Saturday. Um, we're pulling in now. We're going to have a nice little guest and crew barbecue, which will be cool, on the aft deck here. Um, or bry, as most of these guys will understand. <laughs> Say barbecue around here, almost get uh, shot. Um, so that'll be cool. Nice little last night here with the guests. A uh, little bry, a few drinks. Um, and yeah, it should be a good last night on board. Obviously, Dino is going to be doing the entertaining and I'm going to be doing the cooking, so it should go according to plan. Yeah, I mean, like, work, you know, don't work hard um, as a head chef here, you know, work smart. So I like to just give the direction and just put these boys in the braai smoke and I just talk to the guests, really. Don't do much else. Um, but yeah, it should be good. Um, I am... Um, I heard a rumor about a new head chef coming. Uh, rumors, rumors are true. She, a couple of hints. She was my last sous chef, um, and she's coming back as my rotational head chef. Uh, so there'll be a big reveal with that, which I'm super excited about. And Sean is also very excited to be working under a lovely woman like her. Yes. Hashtag. <laughs> he just gave it away. Uh, it's supposed to be a big surprise. It will be. You just killed it. It's okay. It's okay. You can cut it out. When's she coming? Uh, she comes tomorrow. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow we do a little handover, which would be cool to show you guys. Um, when we hand over the galley to a new chef, we give all the notes of, of the previous charters and um, preferences and what boss likes and dislikes. And so she can uh, take over and tell this guy what to do. So you basically get a set of keys and a sous chef and it's like, there you go guys, all for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's been a good eight weeks and I'll see you guys in another eight weeks. So here we have a barbecue. Um, uh, let's go with the bra. Oh, look, let's have a vote. Let's give it to the people. Is it a barbecue or a bra? Um, you are numbered, yeah. You got 12 sappers and you want Aussie. What don't we have? That is the question. <laughs> we are, so we've got uh, some lamb chops here, some marinated lamb chops. We've got some Iberico pork chops, uh, some Iberico flank or secreto, I believe it's pronounced. We got some corn fed chicken marinated, some Wagyu burgers with some Gilesburg, and you know, some salads just for some color. I think Homemade there for buns, decoration. bar Sean, don't oh, forget yeah, yeah. that. Homemade uh, buns by sous chef Sean. Check these out. Zoom in. Zoom in. <laughs> Not too close. Zoom in to this one. Slap it. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, they're actually really good. It's a good recipe. Check it out. Find the link in the bio. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, as, as you can see, Dean's really bubbly at the moment. This is his last evening with us. Um, he'll be signing off soon. So he's finally found his personality <laughs> after two whole months. <laughs> Brutal. Wow. I'm a, I'm a little bit disappointed though because we've got um, Fossi over here. <laughs> he should be brying. And we've got Bjorn over here. Sausage, huh? He should be brying. But um, really obviously the deck boys are <laughs> more interested made, in eating made at this moment. <laughs> All that hard work. I don't know where English, our first English mate man. is. He's disappeared. <laughs> first mate Davey. <laughs> <laughs> Catching sunsets and fields. Kind of, yeah.
good morning. It's a little after 7 a.m. on drop-off day. The guests have just got off the boat. They're on their way to the airport to jump on the jet to fly back to the States. We've already got changed. We're out of our guest on uniform into our guest off uniform. And uh, I'm about to go downstairs, have a chat with all the crew, discuss the highs and the lows of the trips, what we can improve on, what we can work on to be better for the next one, uh, discuss the next trip, and then uh, have that famous below deck uh, charter tip talk, which all the crew are anxiously waiting for. And then after that, we're gonna break, close up the boat, and then give the crew a couple of days off before we do it all again on the weekend. Cool, awesome guys. Guests have gone, great trip. Thank you so much for everybody's efforts. I feel like we got through that one really well. Uh, Lots of, lots of really good points from that one from the previous charter, so, so well done. Um, yep, thank you. Another one. So moving forwards, we've got three days to the next trip, so everyone please behave on your days off. Sean, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll discuss more of that on the next trip. But uh, moving forwards, I know you guys are all anxious to hear. Uh, the guests did leave us a good tip this time. It was a little over $100,000 which works wow. out to be just over $5,000 each. So well done, Ted. Yes. Cool, so enjoy your time off and uh, let's, uh, let's smash out the next one in a couple of days. Well done. Good job, team. Okay, so that wraps up this week's video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it and thank you for staying all the way to the end to see me give this speech. Uh, guys, please remember we are a charter yacht and we are starting to book our Caribbean season now. So December, January, February in the Caribbean. If you want to visit us in St. Bart's, Antigua, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, please visit the uh, website. Blair will put it in the uh, description below, www.yachtloon.com or send us an email at info at yachtloon.com. Also, guys, for daily updates, please don't forget to check out our Instagram, at Modi Yacht Loon. It's basically on there. We throw up stories. We throw up posts daily on where we are and what we're doing. All kinds of stuff that we can't really put up here in the long form on YouTube. All right. Also, don't forget, guys, please drop us a like and subscribe. You know, hit the little subscribe button down here somewhere. Uh, it definitely helps the channel grow and gets it out to everyone. So please, also, if there's anything in the video that you liked, anything that needs more explanation, we are on top of the comments. So please drop us a comment. Tell us what you'd like to see in the next video or anything that we, you'd like to be explained. Either myself, Blair, Maxine, we usually get on there and we try and answer as many questions as we can. Cool, this is the time you've all been waiting for. The bloopers stick around for the next couple of minutes and you can see us all acting like fools trying to get these done. So uh, thank you for watching. Max is leading the deck team today. Oh, April. <laughs> April would slap right now. Got the April, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Extra ass. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> anything to make the guests happy, you know what That's I mean? My employee, South Africans. <laughs> <laughs> Save us a dollar or two. <laughs> <laughs> I can't use that. Just gotta get it all out of my system. <laughs> ah! Love your product. Do you get paid by them or something? Wouldn't mind, wouldn't mind a couple of free bags. <laughs> hey, wait. <laughs>